Hey everyone, this is Dr. Dylan Peckis, and today we are gonna talk about testosterone and sleep apnea. And the reason this is massively important because sleep apnea, 65, 70% of people with sleep apnea are men. And men, their main hormone is testosterone. We're a little bit boring, okay, you know, ladies, got all the different ones. Um, well, we all have the same hormones, just different amounts, but stick with me because in this episode, being able to understand this connection between testosterone and sleep apnea is critical for you to avoid being stuck on even TRT, right? Or hormone replacement therapy, testosterone replacement therapy, being stuck on that. Or, I mean, also, you know, the alternative, not even having that, right? Going through life, or just like so many days where there's just being even more tired, struggling with weight, not being able to maintain muscle mass and libido taking a toll as well because the understanding of this can take you from dealing with that to being able to be just easily going through days like you used to because testosterone especially for men that is what allows us to be vital okay there's a lot of other factors but testosterone this is why trt and hrt sound so attractive right because you just do that and everything's just rainbows and, and unicorns and everything's fine but you know being able to understand fundamentally what goes on can help you achieve that naturally without having to risk the side effects of TRT, HRT, and everything in between. So that's why we're gonna dive into testosterone and sleep apnea. What is the relationship between these two? Does sleep apnea, does that cause less toast, low testosterone or does low testosterone cause sleep apnea or does taking TRT, does that hurt sleep apnea? Does it help sleep apnea? These are all really important questions you need to be able to answer under your own knowledge. That's why we're gonna give you that knowledge here today, okay? So when we're thinking about this relationship, you need to understand kind of the, the current thinking. And if this is your thinking, you don't worry. We'll, we'll move through this and give you some new good viewpoints on this here, okay? And as we're going through this right now, will be a great time, comment below and let me know like, what do you wanna know about this topic? What are your questions? Cause when I see that, whether I answer directly in this episode or I just circle back around to the comments to help you out, either way you win here. All right, so go ahead and type those into the comments below. Okay, so now testosterone, we are told, okay, predominantly this is the message you will get in a doctor's office. Sleep apnea and low T, just happen at the same time, okay? And sleep apnea may cause low T, okay? We'll, we'll get into the relationship a little bit. It's not that simple. But either way, we have a solution. Whether it's an injection, a pellet, putting cream on certain places that should not be seen in a public place unless you want to end up in prison, it's a solution, right? But the moment we get seduced into the thinking of, I call it gas station medicine, which is, oh, this thing is low, this hormone is low, let's go ahead and just fill it in. Yes, you will have some positive benefit in the short term. You absolutely will, don't get me wrong, you will feel a bump in function. But at what cost? Because not only will testosterone uh, supplementation or getting it from an exogenous source, medication, etc., that will shut down your body's own natural production of testosterone, okay? And you may think, what the heck do I care? <laughs> I'm just getting it from a different source. But here's the thing. When you take testosterone in an artificial format, this will cause massive problems because it doesn't behave like normal testosterone, okay? Normal testosterone should go up in the morning, okay? And then go down as the day goes on. But if you inject it, you get a pellet, etc. it's just constantly high, okay? And when it stays high, your body gets resistant to it, okay? Because naturally, testosterone should go up and down, and that allows our bodies to stay sensitive to it, right? But if it's chronically high because you're artificially bringing it into your system, it is going to hurt the receptors long-term. And then guess what? You have two options, okay? Well, you really have three options. Number one, stay in testosterone artificially, and you will have to go up and up and up and up. And that will lead to a lot of the side effects, whether that is losing hair, whether that is a enlarged prostate, and now it is really hard to pee. It does not feel good, okay? 
And then like, what does that say about you? If we're like, okay, you were going along, now you're losing all the things that, I mean, like losing your hair, right? Or, you know, other things that happen, start to lose who you are. And then also the health concern of if your prostate's enlarging, is an enlarged prostate, even prostate cancer, is that something you want to deal with? Because testosterone over time will have something known as androgenic effects. Okay, that's those symptoms I mentioned. There's many more. Okay, even gynecomastia, which is essentially man boobs, would be the very colloquial term for that. That's all what will happen long term with TRT or HRT, right? The second option is that then you take it the same dose, but your body becomes more resistant to it. Okay, and what that looks like, if you were to imagine, okay, let's imagine together, is that as you take testosterone, okay, imagine all these testosterone molecules, and they need to fit into like a, like a cup, okay? And these cups, imagine a cups on a table, this is like receptors on a cell, okay? And these testosterone molecules, if you imagine this, they're floating around, right? And they need to land into this cup here, this receptor. And then this is what allows your body to do all the things that testosterone would do naturally and, and, and functionally, right? Just goes in that cup, does all the testosterone things downstream inside your cell throughout your body. Now, when there is the same amount of testosterone floating around in your blood, you imagine it, all those molecules, over time, your cells will get rid of some of these cups, okay? This is what happens when testosterone is constantly elevated because you're taking it through an artificial source, okay? This is what will happen. It's not fantastic, okay? Now, I wanna talk about another reason why high testosterone, especially with sleep apnea, is bad because that's really important to know, so keep that in the back of your mind. But the third thing you need to really be aware of is what people don't really talk about when you start TRT, eventually coming off of it. Because being on it forever, those are options one and two, not really great. So a lot of men will eventually come off of it, okay? This is very harsh on your body because what happens, if we imagine our cups again, you have fewer and fewer cups, right? Let's just say you have one cup instead of like 10 that's gonna receive a testosterone molecule. And you suddenly go from like, you know, say 10 of these testosterone molecules floating around. And when you go to your own natural, guess what? What did I say? You shut that down earlier. So it just goes like all the way down. So instead of having a lot of testosterone, let's say you only have like one molecule floating around. Okay. And this may not be enough here. It definitely won't be enough. And that like some men to reboot their body's own natural ability to produce testosterone is very hard. And it is even harder when you have conditions like sleep apnea. And we'll get into why that is in, in a moment, okay? I'm just opening loops like it's, like it's my job. So, but to come back to this other loop here about sleep apnea specifically, because testosterone, we always think about it as it helps build muscle, which is true, right? It also does those uh, androgenic things I talked about where it will modulate your hair, modulate your voice, modulate, you know, how things uh, below your belt should, should or should not look. But one of the things testosterone also controls is your respiratory centers in your brain. So if you imagine testosterone, it will go into your brain here. All right, imagine it coming into your brain and it will tell you how much you should be breathing. It contributes. It's not a standalone signal. It contributes to the overall signal. Here's the thing. The higher testosterone is, you will have less of a drive to breathe from your brain, okay? And in fact, when they did a research study looking at TRT, sleep apnea, TRT actually doubled the amount of apneic episodes per hour. Doubled. Okay, and it's because testosterone comes into your brain, if you imagine that comes in there, and essentially, uh, it's called a hypoventilatory drive, okay, it decreases the, you know, the stimulus to breathe. That's not what you want with sleep apnea. Okay, that is just not what you want. 
Now, the other thing, I gotta close out these loops. Always get in trouble for my loops here. The other big thing is that testosterone actually goes down because of a bigger issue. Because the, the common questions people will ask, does low testosterone lead to sleep apnea? I will say no, it does not. It does not directly. Does sleep apnea cause low testosterone? I will say kinda, okay? It does indirectly, but there is a common core issue that drives them both, okay? If you wanna comment below, take a guess at what that is, okay? You can comment, it's the economy, it's, you know, corn. <laughs> Whatever your guess is below, really curious to know, and uh, I'll give you 10 points <laughs> if you get this right. So, yes, there's a point system for everyone who comments. Now, the common factor relies on you knowing how testosterone is made. And yes, we know it comes from the gonads, testicles, in fact, but what's the most important player? It's actually your mitochondria inside a certain subset of cells known as Leydig cells, but it's your mitochondria, okay? These produce energy throughout your entire body. And in sleep apnea, okay, if we were to imagine a, a, a relationship diagram here, sleep apnea, okay, this will damage your mitochondria, okay? And then as a result, your mitochondria will not make as many hormones. So you can see why even if, because if you imagine this sleep apnea, point an arrow to mitochondria here and then that lowers testosterone, then the gas station medicine approach of just increasing testosterone, does that really fix the issue? No, it doesn't. Okay, because as much of knowing this is important, it's also just like, if your body makes something, you have to know and identify, like you can tap back into your body doing that. You just need to be shown how, okay? Because as long as you're relying on external substances, guess what? You always will be, and it just builds so many complexities that come crashing back down onto you. And then you're left back at square one being like, what is even going on anymore? And then that leaves you in your life just like so focused in on your health and you're missing out on the things like right in front of you in, in your life, whether it's at work or at home, because you're just so focused on this thing because it's, it's not being addressed properly because of, of this conventional sick care model of the pill for this, the injection for that, okay? That's not who you wanna be, okay? So that's why really the, the way you wanna focus in on is at this core factor here with your mitochondria, okay? And yes, of course, with your sleep habit, because these are related, right? Not breathing at night, not sleeping well, well affect your mitochondria, and guess what? Bad mitochondria then lead to a negative feedback loop. That is, it makes your sleep apnea worse, okay? So that's why when people are like asking, oh, should I, should I take TRT? I think I already answered that. Uh, yeah, so the bigger thing is fixing your sleep apnea, right? Now, not everyone with sleep apnea has issues with low T, okay? So there are gonna be certain things that are gonna be more helpful for this, okay? I'll just put low T in, in, on, our, on, our, on our notes here, if you're taking notes. So one of the most important things, okay, is gonna be, and this is, again, with your mitochondria in mind, one thing is gonna be stress reduction, okay? Because there's gonna be one hormone that when you don't have a whole lot of testosterone floating around, it's gonna pretty much ruin the rest of your day, okay? That is cortisol, okay? So if your cortisol is high, for whatever reason, this will essentially counteract testosterone. That's not what you want at a moment like this. It's not. Testosterone, that's gonna be lowered by cortisol, okay? And whatever stress you have going on, okay? Because I know sometimes like we hear stress reduction, oh my God. But like, seriously, you gotta look at this in the face, like what are those major reactions you're having during the day? Okay, or maybe it is waking up in the middle of the night or thinking endlessly about something. What needs to be done about that? Okay, so focus in like, what is that for you? And then how have you best found to address that? Okay, because you know, if, if we were talking one-on-one, -on -one, I would be able to help you identify the, the best way for you to do that. But chances are, you know, in, in this moment, we're not in the same room. I don't think so, let me, <laughs> let me look behind you. 
or behind me. And you need to be able to use, okay, what are the things that in the past may have helped a little bit here, okay? Because then you just need to amplify that on your current efforts. And of course, that's, you know, even before being able to, you know, have someone help you go even deeper on that. So stress reduction is going to be a huge, huge thing here. Other big piece, okay? And of course, I, you know, th these are going to be uh, more blanket recommendations because everyone has their own individual mitochondria and, and testosterone issues. But one thing, if you want to be really trendy, is red light therapy, okay? Red light therapy, because if you imagine why this is helpful, it's because when you apply it locally, I'll let you connect the dots, what that means, when you apply it locally to the area that makes testosterone, guess what? Uh, that is going to boost the mitochondria in that area specifically to help with testosterone, okay? So that's, that's another thing you can do, because again, it's not about getting lost in just following this T number, okay? And there's so many things we can get into, sex hormone binding goblin, estrogen, all these different things. But the one thing you have to keep your eye on is your mitochondria here, okay? And there's a lot of different ways to approach that, nutritionally, supplements. There's, you know, your circadian rhythm, like what timing you're doing everything, uh, your environment, and that's gonna be really highly individual to you, okay? It, it just is by nature of everything. Unless we all live in the same room, we have the same mitochondria, and same, came from the same mom, all the different things, you know, I could be able to give you just, you know, that advice there. Uh, even so, reducing stress to bring down cortisol, red light, those are going to help tremendously at that mitochondrial level, okay? Because when you reduce stress, it also helps your mitochondria out as well, helps sleep, all those other pieces there, okay? So those are the really kind of the, the two pivotal things really uh, most people can do with a good benefit to risk ratio, okay? Now, of course, being able to identify like, okay, what are the best things for me and be able to really, you know, make sure you're doing everything right there. Um, let me check. Nope, I still do not have Neuralink in. I can't really tell, okay? <laughs> so I can't look through this camera and that'd be interesting, right? If this was like virtual reality. Uh, but nonetheless, being able to have your individual issues identified and work with someone to really target those, so, so important, okay? Uh, and, and that's why what we actually offer uh, for people who are interested, of course, uh, we have a free one-on-one -on -one evaluation session where we help you identify, okay, you know, with your sleep and other symptoms, right? Because it's a very holistic approach, uh, not just a check the box sort of thing. What are those big issues for you? And, you know, how can you begin to address those? Okay. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, just go to ochnow.com forward slash talk. Okay. That is O-C-H now.com forward slash talk okay so there you go there's your episode on testosterone and sleep apnea hope you enjoyed and hope to talk to you soon